Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing it up and, well, sometimes putting lights on it, uh, in anticipation for some pretty major cruising someday. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. indeed getting to that time of year isn't it even though it's only november the marina here in victoria puts on a light up festival where they encourage all the boats in the marina to put as many lights on their boat as possible in fact they've also very kindly donated a few lights which is very handy because <laughs> i kind of went all out this year anyway i don't know how this is going to turn out what i'm trying to do is simulate the legislature which well of course you can't see it now because it's not turned on but if you're familiar with the victoria legislature it's just lots of lights so anyway, I'm about halfway there and uh, yeah, well that's today's project. How about we jump back in time and you know what we're going to do? We are going to finish the bulkhead. Yes, it's done. Sneak preview. <laughs> and good morning. Well, this is all cured. Now, I mean, for any of you who are like me that basically are really bad at all these sorts of things, uh, drywalling, fiberglassing, applying sealant sticky goo out of a tube. This might look like a real mess, but I have been able to get to a point in my life where I can put it down as a mess and then clean it up to something reasonable. When I was building custom homes, I had a plumber that did all of our caulking for us. No matter what it was, well, other than huge exterior stuff, he was just a master. He could lay down a bead perfect as if, it's sort of akin to welding, I suppose. There's some people who can do it and some people who can't. And I'm firmly in the camp of people who can't. Now, to tidy this up, I have several tools. A uh, Ulfa knife, otherwise known as utility knife, uh, a razor, and a scraper, carbide scraper. I think between those three, I'm gonna be able to do a relatively nice job, hopefully in the end, a really nice job, of, uh, of making this look quite neat. Okay, so this is gonna be just fine. Between the razor and then sanding afterwards, um, the, uh, the bulk of the material that's up on the surface of the wood will come off very, very easily. Now, the more complex part is going to be what can we do about the material on the glass, but I'm quite familiar with a few techniques for that, so this is gonna go great, this is gonna go great. The trick, of course, is to not catch the grain. Okay, so now the trick to being able to cut um, the sealant off the glass is to be able to know exactly where the edge of the wood is. And to see that properly, I have to do the sanding. So let's get this done. Okay, so now it's really easy to see where the edge of the glass is, or at least the edge of the wood. Now I can move in whatever I'm gonna move in, about a quarter of an inch, and cut it with the, um, with the Ulfa knife, and then razor off the remainder with the razor. You really want to be very careful you don't razor underneath past where you've made the cut because of course you don't want to compromise the bond onto the glass. One last fine sanding and uh, I'm ready to install this. Now I'm going to install this dry and that may be a bit controversial and that's because I believe there should really only be one line of waterproofing in any assembly. Um, this goes way back to my building years. If you have two separate lines 
or places where a particular joint is waterproofed, if the first fails, you are guaranteed to have rot because the second one probably won't. Now you might say, okay, but the water may not leak to the inside. Yeah, but that water leaking to the inside is an indication of a seal failure, which you should attend to. But if the water leaks past the first seal and doesn't pass the second seal, you have perpetual fresh water, which never ever dries out and that guarantees rot. Wood doesn't mind getting wet at all. It's perfectly happy to get wet. It just doesn't like staying wet. So if you can create an assembly where water might get in, let's hope not, but if it does get in, try to make sure it can evaporate off the inside. Or better yet, if it's such a large leak, it can be seen so that the owner can do something about it. Um, so in this case, uh, because as you already know, I'm going to put a sealant um, bead along the bottom and the edges. Uh, and of course, there'll be one on the top to the cabin top. That is my only line of waterproofing. Uh, if anything was to get past that, it would get into an environment that's basically inside the boat, which could evaporate rather than into a joint, uh, which has no possibility of evaporating on the backside. So let's put it in. Oy, 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 oy. The amount of equity in this piece now is unimaginable. Okay, now the only exception to this no bedding philosophy of mine is going to be in these upper corners here that are particularly vulnerable. Um, these are definitely the weak link in this whole build and I'm just going to basically encapsulate this whole corner in, uh, in sealant and um, make sure that they just absolutely have no chance of leaking. There. Okay then, it's that moment. Absolutely awesome. Okay. <laughs> it's in place. Okay, let's get at least some screws in uh, before I tool this just a little bit. All right, well, I put all the screws in. What the heck? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah! Not the sort of thing I enjoy using, but when you need it, you need it. Beauty. Okay, time to put the bungs in. Um, now, for those of you who have been watching for a while, you'll have seen all this, but I'll just go over it again for any new viewers. Now, it's important to line up the grain in the bung with the grain in the piece of wood you're working on. So I pre-mark all my bungs with um, the line of the grain. Uh, that makes it a lot easier when I'm working quickly to be able to make sure I line those up. Now, people have always said, why don't you just mark the um, bungs on the board before you cut the bungs out. But these are taper cut bungs, uh, so they're cut in this direction. So the line, the place I have to draw the line is actually inside the wood until I snap them off after. So anyway, that explains that. Um, these are all burnt, you'll see. I've been worried that's gonna put a little dark ring, but somehow it doesn't show up at all. So I'm grateful for that. Um, excellent, so I've made up a little thickened epoxy. I'm having a runaway bung issue here. <laughs> because of uh, my sloping decks. Okay, so I've made up some thickened epoxy, which I uh, put on a piece of cardboard, and uh, that makes it very easy to just wipe the end of the bung 
on the cardboard to get enough epoxy just on the tip like that and then uh, place it in the hole. Excellent. And then a quick tip with the hammer and we can wait. Okay. And I sort of batch hammering them home so I don't have to do it at each one. Okay. And before I prime these joints for the sealer, I'm just going to give them a quick wipe down with acetone. Just a quick wipe, make sure there's nothing foreign in there. And as well, over the top here, where this big bead is going to go on the back side here. And the primer. Well, this is going to be fiddly. Um, I'm going to use a tiny modeling paintbrush. Now, in most cases, you wouldn't want to return the brush to the primer. However, I'm going to use pretty much all of this on this project, so I'm not so worried about it. So here we go. Basically, just lay that in this seam here. Actually, I'm going to stop here and I'll tell you why. I think I will mask off the um, cabin top. I had intended to mask it for the sealant, but I figured let's just do it for the primer as well, just to keep everybody happy. And up here as well. Okay, where were we? Let's just carry on with this. And up in behind here, I'll use my paper towel method to wipe it in. Okay, I'm gonna say that actually went really well. This stuff is unbelievably sticky. Oops, I better get that cleaned up. Okay, and here we go. Now I'm starting with a relatively uh, small tip. You'll notice I cut my tips straight. Um, again, not someone who has <laughs> makes claim to any great skill at this, but I've always found the angle tip does me no advantage, especially when it starts to get gooped up and I can't keep track of which way it's angled. Um, it seems easier to me to just angle the gun, which effectively to me does the same thing. You professional sealant applicators will um, correct me on that, I'm sure. Okay. So I'm doing three joints. I'm doing this relatively small joint, this larger joint, and this massive joint behind here, which I'll take you around when I do. Again, I mentioned I'm starting with, starting with a small tip. I'm gonna have to tool this joint with my finger because of the presence of all these bungs. Of course, <laughs> I'm gonna be sanding this again uh, to sand off the bungs and clean up um, any of this sealant, but you know, I wouldn't mind if it wasn't too much of a mess. So let's get going here. Doke. Always fun working in the dark. Okay, and now for the absolutely miserable part. Let's get going here. There we go. I might have wanted to do this in a way that I wasn't competing with the bungs. Okay, so uh, phase two, I've enlarged the tip slightly for uh, the next larger seam, which I'm going to tool with a tooling tool. Cheap, cheapo, cheapo. Let's get going. Okay, nice big wipe. And if I've learned anything about this stuff, you must pull the tape promptly or it will tear off the edge and uh, your joint will, won't be nearly as nice as you're hoping. 
And finally, this monster uh, seal at the back side. Now, this is going to be quite large. I'm using the largest radius uh, I have on the uh, little tooling tool. That's because there are all kinds of voids in the edge of this fiberglass top. You'll remember when I first got into doing this, I was pointing that out. So this is going to be quite a large seam and uh, it's kind of a mess, but there you go. Okay. Now I'm gonna to tool this as I go because um, there's a potential for a lot of waste here if I'm not careful. Now you can see some places where I have to add some more and that means I can be a little more efficient. And as before, Prompt with the tape is essential. Well, as gnarly as that certainly seems to be, I can assure you it's going to be just fine by the time I'm done with it. Need I remind you that this stuff is sandable and uh, my lack of expertise in applying goo from a tube is made up from my uh, not bad expertise in sanding it back off again, much like drywall. Okay. Not much else I can do here for a little bit while I wait for all this stuff to set. Let's go have some fun and go inside and oil the interior. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I cannot wait to see what this looks like. First thing, gotta get this plastic off. Okay. Woohoo! <laughs> I have so been looking forward to this moment and it's finally here oh yes all right then well I'll wait about an hour or so and then um, rub it in let that soak in really really well oh my gosh I just love it Right, now that looks awesome. Put the ceiling panel back in. Now there's quite a few trim pieces, as I mentioned, that have to go in here. Um, in fact, an upcoming project, but we'll do it back in Victoria at the marina, is all the little strips that will cover up this uh, masonite overhead. And uh, I think that'll look great, especially with one there. And then that'll allow me to tie in this uh, connection piece, which will hide these pocket screws. And I'm feeling really good about the way that's gonna look too, so. Wow! Wow, 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 Love it. Love it. Love it. And wow, what a fantastic day. Unforecasted. This was supposed to be not as pleasant. Okay, so absolutely ready to get going on um, cleaning up all these bungs and cleaning up all this. Well, there's a lot of goo here, but that's, uh, that's the cost of uh, waterproofness. Okay, there's a couple of ways to approach removing the excess bung. One is with a one-sided saw. Now this is a special saw where all the teeth are set to one side so that if you use the correct side flush against your work surface, none of these teeth will scratch this. So I can give you an indication of what that looks like. We got a left hand, right hand problem going on here. Here we go. Excellent. And you'll see, no scratches on the surface of the wood. You do have to be able to make sure that you put the right side down or you'll take a terrible mess. This particular one is from Lee Valley here in Canada. And if you put the logo against the wood, you're safe. The other way is with a chisel. Now this seems a little more uh, adventurous, but it's actually quite safe. The trick is we don't know which way the grain is going in the bung. So if we shear it off flush with the work surface, there's a possibility the grain is going down into the wood and you'll have a hollow and be very, very sad. So make sure you use the bevel of the chisel down and so that you knock it off slightly above the surface. So even if the grain is going in that direction, we're not gonna be into the wood. You gotta admit, it's a lot quicker. <laughs> Okay then, so sanding the bungs, pretty straightforward. 
Gone. Well, gone with the exception of that perfect little hint of a bung. I like it. I like it. Okay, so, and now sanding the, let's have a look here. Um, the sealant is actually almost as effective. You can see I can fairly quickly turn that into quite a tidy little uh, bead. And so I start with the power sander and I'll finish this up with some hand sanding. All right, on we go. There we go, very nice. And up here, it's just as easy. Get the bulk of that off of the power tool and then just clean it up just a little bit with a hand sander. And now for what is most certainly the most reveal moment in this entire project. Tongue well. Remember this, or more importantly, this absence of handrail thingy dewey? Um, two failed attempts at steaming it and having it hold, and I learned a lot about steam bending, especially steam bending sapelle, and that the lignin doesn't set in the new shape, but it does soften enough that I can bend it. So, as I'm sure I mentioned, I'm gonna have to steam it in place. In other words, it's steaming right now, it's just about done, and I'm gonna have to actually form it across this shape. Um, as it cools. And I must say, at this temperature, it cools very, very quickly. So, here's hoping. I'm gonna bed it here, and I'm gonna bed it up here. I don't see any value in bedding it all the way along, because after it's in and cooled and screwed down and everything, I'm going to put a bead underneath um, of caulking to keep water from wicking around under the corner. Actually bedding it down, to me, I don't believe does anything. So, here we go. All right, to get started, we'll load on the bedding down here and up here. Okay, if there was ever move quickly, this is it. That right down on there. I've discovered I can use bar clamps down to the porthole down here. Very convenient, okay. That's bedded quite nicely down there. I'm gonna put another one on here. Okay, putting two nice big screws in here. Gonna move this one along a bit. And on we go. that it does fit. Oh, very nice. How are we doing down here? It's still bedded. Yes, it is. Woohoo! This worked! Pleased. Okay, I am very, very pleased. That worked out well. Let's get some bungs in here. Come on, I know you all absolutely love. <laughs> and here we go. I'm just going to dip these down in here. It's all the same. And off we go.
Well, hello and welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week. Again, blessed with Alfie here from Life is Like Sailing, uh, who I'm so pleased that you've come down to visit me here in Victoria. First time you've been down to see Jordy. Uh, yeah, I've only seen uh, Jordy on the videos. On the, on the big on screen, the, on the big as you screen. were saying. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And uh, so it's super fun to see uh, her in person. And, yeah. and to see you again. Well, you yeah. too, exactly, because you were on the show a couple of weeks, a couple of months. It's been a while. I, can't uh, I think a month ago. About a month ago, you yeah. came to visit Art-ish. me in, yeah. in Genoa Bay, and uh, we had a great time then. And we uh, did a Beer of the Week we did on our boat. Beer of the Week on your yeah. boat. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The common denominator seems to be pubs. Weren't we at the pub there, too? Uh, yes. Yes, in Maple Bay. Well, we've yeah. also just returned from the Bent Mast, my local here in uh, in Victoria, and yeah. uh, had a good meal yeah. and a couple of good beers. Really neat old pub yeah and uh the carpet didn't stink like beer <laughs> as bad as i was expecting quite as bad as i suggested it yeah. might let's get to a beer um this was a very very kind gift from a good friend of mine stephen king uh who came by recently with a whole schwack of beer thank you ever so much stephen so i'm gonna try and read this but obviously gonna help me uh cr- cr- walk, crooked walk on the wild side yeah dark mild ale yeah from stitzville from Stittsville, on, Ontario. Yeah, that's on the other side, though. <laughs> you remembered it, good man. And the, uh, uh, the covered, brewery. Covered Bridge Brewing. Covered Bridge Brewing. Yeah. All right. Um, pretty excited about this. I've been hanging on to this beer for quite a while uh, because Stefan was here quite some time ago. So we'll see uh, what we think of, uh, what was it, a dark? Uh, this one? Yeah. Dark Ale. Dark Ale. Thanks so yeah. much. Good thing I'm here to help good you out. Damn good thing. <laughs> exactly. I, I generally don't pull this off quite so uh, smoothly. Um, I should confess to the entire world that this is the second take. And in fact, to be honest, it's the second beer because the camera <laughs> failed us the first time around. So, but fortunately, we have a backup beer. First world problem. First world problems, <laughs> absolutely. You're drinking and, a rum and coke and joining me. Yes. Uh, I don't drink beer, but I drink rum and coke. And thank you for the, the pour. Well, thank you very much. Cheers. Mm, that Kraken is really good. Awesome, perfect. See, yeah. Only dark rum to have. Yeah, I'm going to get some of that. Back in Nova Scotia, we call that a black and black. Mm. So what do you think of the beer? Anyway, no worries about that. Um, let me jump into something happy. I'm going to give away a Travels with Jordy t-shirt um, to uh, last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy t-shirt as I fire up my phone here trying to figure out how to get to them quickly. Um, Jerem M. Jerem M, you've won yourself a Travels with Jordy t-shirt. Uh, get hold of me and we'll make sure we send that off to you uh, promptly. Okay, all that's left is to give away a t-shirt. And uh, because I have Alfie present from uh, Life is Like Sailing, I'm going to put him on the spot again, as he helped me out last time, with a word of the week. Yeah, I had slightly more notice this time, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and last time I used the word northern because we were on Northern Dancer 5. Right, that's our boat. right, right. Um, and then I thought, uh, I live up in Ladysmith, which right. is on Vancouver Island. Mm-hmm. You live in Victoria, which is also on Vancouver Island. I'm seeing so, a theme. Yeah, so why don't we use the word island? Island it is! Yeah. Right. Cheers! Does that Excellent. work for you? I love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. So, if you'd like to win a Travels Ready t-shirt, simply use the word island in a comment down below, and I'll pick it random over the next week or so worth of comments. And if I pick you, you'll have won yourself a Travels Jordy t-shirt and... A couple Life is Like Sailing stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that's what I was supposed to say. That's right. Let's go. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to all you. See you next week. <laughs> Did I pull it off that time? I can't even tell. Make it work. <laughs>